Whether if you were a kid scared of the dark or someone who was terrified of the monster underneath your bed, the concept of fear is not new. However, the concept of exploiting this fear as pop culture is new, otherwise known as the horror genre. Throughout the years, the horror genre has transitioned into the pop culture genre we see today. Although many say horror is the lowest of all genres and exploits our fears through gory, cheesy plots and low-budget filming, with the recent resurgence of horror, we are presented with key cultural pieces spearheaded by filmmakers of color, female filmmakers, and LGBTQ filmmakers. Before talking about the resurgence of horror, groundwork of the original horror movies needs to be laid. Born from movies such as The Exorcist, The Shining, and A Nightmare on Elm Street, a formula, tropes, and certain themes became staples of the genre. However, the typical formula for original horror movies was, generally put, centered around an oppressor and its victims. Depending on society at the time of the film, the monster shifted accordingly. In the 1970s, we saw a plethora of poltergeists, ghosts, and religious evil. In the 80s, we were introduced to a new type of monster that was more human, such as Michael from Halloween, Jack Torrance from The Shining, Here's Johnny! or even Jason from Friday the 13th. This type of monster can also be seen continuing into the 1990s. However, in the 90s, the human monster became a monster who could be your friend. This can be seen in the 1996 film Scream when the masked killer who was murdering and targeting Sidney Prescott and her friend group actually turned out to be her friend and boyfriend. Surprise, Sidney. What all of these monsters in these exceptionally diverse horror movies have in common is that they are all centered around the other. The other is described as anyone who is considered outside the social norm. An exceptional example of the human other is Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. On screen, Leatherface's need to kidnap individuals and consume their flesh is what makes him the other. What was not shown, however, was how Leatherface became a monster. Leatherface was born into his cannibalistic family and forced to murder and eat those that the family captured by the time he was a teenager. When he attempted to resist his family, he was scolded and abused, shaping him into the killer he was in the movie. This does not excuse Leatherface's violent murders or actions, but it does bring up the interesting tendency of horror movies to make monsters out of people who are mentally ill, or more importantly, people who have been marginalized. This brings us to the resurgence of horror of the decade of 2010 to 2020, and the shift of the other within the usually predictable genre. In our current decade, we are beginning to witness a new type of horror that are key cultural pieces. What we are witnessing is something called woke horror, this new type of horror does not follow the traditional formula and tendencies to make the other into the monster of the film. Instead, it investigates and accentuates current societal topics such as systemic racism and awareness of social justice, and there are key figures responsible for this. Filmmakers of color, female filmmakers, and LGBTQ filmmakers have created a new, more terrifying horror movie and have switched the roles. There have been a few woke horror films before, such as American Psycho, that attacks consumerism and excess lifestyles through Patrick Bateman's bloodthirsty appetite, and Candyman, which provides a raw portrayal about the hardships endured by those who live in the Chicago projects, which also revealed problems of systemic injustice and urban divestment. What better idea to make a horror film based in a horrible place to live in, a housing project? However, with director Jordan Peele leading the pack and other directors such as Sam Levinson not far behind, they are releasing movies such as Get Out and Assassination Nation that make other woke horror films look like they came from the 1960s. What these films and these directors all have in common is not only a new generational perspective, but how they have switched the perspective of the film entirely. The other I previously explained is no longer monstrous, but is the victim being oppressed by society's prejudices. People of color, marginalized people, and LGBTQ people were the other in previous horror movies before, but now they are the victims or even the hero or heroines of the movie. In Jordan Peele's movie, Get Out, it centers around a young black photographer dating a white woman. When he goes to her family's reunion, he notices the other African Americans present are acting completely off and extremely weird. He later discovers that his girlfriend's family has been stealing black people's bodies and giving them to old, dying, and white people so they can move on. Get out!
This can be seen to represent America's dark past of slavery and the oppression of African Americans in this country. Additionally, the minds and consciousness of the black victims whose bodies were stolen did not disappear, but they were all sent to the sunken place. The sunken place not only exists within the film, but also within our society, as it symbolizes the silencing of marginalized people by the white hegemon. Furthermore, the boyfriend survives the treacherous family in the end, ultimately showing a person of color triumphing over the oppressive white society. We can also see this in the film Assassination Nation, filmed by Sam Levinson, which reveals social injustices not involving race, but sexual identity. The film Assassination Nation follows a friend group of four teenage girls from Salem, Massachusetts. People within their town begin to get hacked, and eventually the hacker reveals the friend group secrets in this harrowing age of technology, and their entire town turns against them and anarchy ensues. Although the film is extremely gory and explicit, there is a hopeful aspect within the woke horror film. The other becomes the heroine, the fighter, and the survivor. Not only in the middle of the movie does the African-American mother of one of the friends save all of their lives, but the women of the friend group themselves also fight back against their oppressors. Moreover, Harry Neff was casted as one of the main girls in the film. She did not simply play Bex, a transgender woman within the film, but she played a woman of her own gender identity. Additionally, she saves herself and her friends, becoming one of the main heroines within the movie. We rarely see such representation of a member of the LGBTQ community that paints them in such a positive and powerful light while they were overcoming their oppressors in a society that is terrified of anything and anyone who is considered different. Overall, Jordan Peele, Sam Levinson, and many other women filmmakers, filmmakers of color, and filmmakers of the LGBTQ community are the driving force behind the resurgence of horror and main benefactors to the creation of woke horror. Films such as Get Out and Assassination Nation are breaking the boundaries of stereotypical horror films that reinforce the status quo. These films, amongst many other woke horror films, are highlighting serious issues such as systemic racism, homophobia, and many other societal prejudices, while also uplifting marginalized groups of people. Many may say that true horror lies in the originals, such as Leatherface, Michael Myers, and Jack Torrance. However, these filmmakers and films have pulled back the curtain to reveal that the real monsters walk among us.